Hello, and thank you for joining us today for another Thursday evening program here with the Genealogy Center. We are glad that you're with us this evening, and we're excited for tonight's program, which will dive into um, genealogical resources at the State Archives of, of North Carolina. Catherine Crickmore is our speaker, and she's a reference archivist at the State Archives of North Carolina, and she's worked within the Public Services Unit there for three years. She works closely with thousands of historic records housed at the State Archives, and she regularly gives webinars and in-person talks about how to use the collections for genealogical research. So I will hand it over to her, and we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here today. Uh, as Kate said, I am a reference archivist. I've been in the public services unit at the State Archives since 2019. Today, I'll be going over visiting the State Archives and what is really available for genealogy research on site and online. Uh, so let me go ahead and get my screen up and we can get started. So to begin, I'd like to share a little bit about the State Archives. Uh, we were founded out of the 1903 North Carolina State Historical Commission, which is the third oldest in the country. It was established to preserve the state's history, and the core mission today is to collect, preserve, and provide access to archival materials related to North Carolina history. We house over 50,000 linear feet of materials documenting North Carolina history, including government records and non-government material. Uh, our main site is in downtown Raleigh between the governor's mansion and the legislative building, but we do also have two satellite sites in Asheville and Manteo, um, at, so I, at either end of the state as well. Our Raleigh location primarily serves as a research facility and is our central repository and access point for the state archives, and it also houses the government and heritage library. Uh, the picture on the screen is the state archives building in downtown Raleigh. So when entering the building, uh, you must first sign in with the security guard in the lobby who will ask you if you're planning to visit the library or the archives. Both share a common goal of providing information to researchers, but they can sometimes get confused by first time visitors. Uh, so which to visit depends on the type of research being conducted, how far along in your research you are, and uh, the types of records that you'll be need uh, to be viewing. So I just wanna highlight a few differences. The library has many published family histories and research files, and the uh, files are searchable by surname as well, in most cases. The archives has a small quantity that was donated to us, plus some family histories in our private collections, but the library is a better search for more secondary published family histories. The library has subscriptions to paid sites like Ancestry.com, Newspapers.com, and Full3, those sort of things. The archives does not have any of those subscriptions, but the library does allow our staff access to the site, and we can access them upstairs in the search room as well. The library uh, collects abstracts and family histories from beyond North Carolina, particularly the surrounding states. Uh, so they have a lot of um, Tennessee, Virginia, South Carolina resources, as well as North Carolina, but the archives only collect North Carolina abstracts and North Carolina secondary sources. The archives has several rules and regulations one has to follow in order to do research in our search room, uh, and I'll go into more detail with that later, uh, but the library is, has less stringent rules that researchers need to follow, and that's primarily because the archives keeps, preserves, and provides access to original documents in our custody. And the library may have some rare books, but generally they only have secondary sources. So many first time researchers ask where they should start when visiting. Our usual recommendation is that you start in the library and then gather information, make sure you have everything in order, and that hopefully will lead you to the archives later in your visit. We definitely want visitors to use the archives, but we are aware that many researchers have limited time while they're visiting and generally you'll have better luck starting in the library. So I'd like to briefly go over our security and check-in procedures for the search room. Visitors will gain access and be able to handle original and irreplaceable documents while you're visiting. So we do have some security measures in place and we ask you to follow our procedures to protect and prolong the lives of our records. 
A photo ID is required upon check-in and you must be registered in our database. You'll receive a registration card during your visit that you'll sign and keep with you and then turn it back in at the end of your visit when you check out. You'll also receive a copy of our rules and regulations, which are posted on our website. Most of the rules are common sense. No food or drink is allowed inside, no pens or markers, no bags or binders, and no original records. We have lockers outside of the search room where you can store your belongings. And you can bring in things like pencils, any notes that you may have, uh, electronics are fine, and photos are okay as long as the flash is off. Any items that are brought inside will be examined before leaving, uh, just to keep that in mind as well. So once you are checked in, the reference staff can answer general questions and uh, make recommendations about which items to request while you're there. To request a record, you must fill out and turn in a call slip, which you can see on your screen there, along with your registration card. Here are three different colored call slips for the main three types of records in our custody. The white ones are for county records, the blue ones are for state agency records, and the pink ones are for private manuscripts and other special collections. The call slips have a place to fill out a brief description of the record along with your name and specific call numbers. And reference staff like myself will assist in filling them out if you're unfamiliar with the process. And we can also direct you to finding aids and abstracts. You can turn in multiple call slips during your visit, but you'll only receive one box at a time. When you turn in a call slip, our reference staff will retrieve a record from our stack. We have four floors of records in our main building, plus we have other archival materials stored in record centers nearby. Most of our records are stored in uniform sized acid-free boxes called fiber dex boxes. That's the ones you can see on your screen now in our stacks and on the table being used by a researcher. Um, but some records may also be in volumes or large leather bound books. We also have copies of most of our records on microfilm in our search room, as well as some that are only on microfilm. When you receive a box, you'll use a pink marker to keep your place when you take out the folders and it's one folder at at a time. You may have up to three volumes at at a time, however. The stacks are only accessible to reference staff and usually records can be retrieved in just a few minutes while you're there, unless they are stored next door or on offsite, which may take a few more minutes. So let's go over the types of records available at the State Archives that may aid in your genealogy research. Uh, the State Archives is a government uh, agency primarily, so most of the records are from state and local governments like county and state agency records. But we also have private or special collections and a few other categories of records like newspapers and North Carolina Supreme Court cases. Our county records are any records transferred from our county government offices. And starting in 1903, the North Carolina Historical Commission approached counties about keeping their historical records and have been work working with the county governments to transfer any permanent records to the archives custody. It's not mandatory though, and some counties have preferred to keep their records themselves. In fact, most other US state archives are not set up to be a central repository like we are. Generally speaking, the archives has any surviving record from the county's inception to the mid 1900s. Records are stored by county and are arranged by the type of record. So you need to know the county or counties where your family lives before you can start to conduct the research in the archives. Record keeping systems have changed somewhat, but the basics have largely stayed the same since the 700s in North Carolina. Uh, the county clerk of court would maintain court records, administrative records, and any official records deemed important to keep, and a register of deeds would keep land and vital records. One issue to remember is loss of records due to fire, theft, and carelessness. We have this reference map that you can see on your screen of what we call burned counties that shows 37 counties have lost records due to fire, and 70 out of the 100 North Carolina counties have lost records for various other reasons. So when choosing records to look at, consider how a person would have interacted with the county government and determine if there would have been a surviving record of this interaction. Today, we get a birth certificate, get a marriage license, pay taxes, file for a divorce, file a lawsuit, get arrested, buy or sell property, probate a will, and eventually get a death certificate. And before, people had similar government interactions, but due to record-keeping laws and record loss, there may not be a record left of the event. 
At the archives, we arrange and group county records into 11 categories. The, the first is bonds, which were a bound, binding agreement or contract usually to perform a task, such as apprenticeship to teach a child a trade, bastardy bonds to ensure that a child born out of wedlock would not be a financial burden to the county, official bonds that a person would promise to fulfill the duties of a government post or serve as a county official, uh, corporation charters or dissolution of corporations in the county, and professional licenses and registrations of people to practice medical care and other professions. The second category is administration. So those were records uh, pertaining to or created by administrative bodies such as Board of Commissioners minutes, Board of Education, Board of Health, Wardens of the Poor, uh, that sort of thing. The next is court records. Those were administration and actions of the county court system, particularly in civil and criminal cases. Those would include minutes and other court dockets. Uh, early court minutes for the pleas and quarter sessions also would document administrative matters as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Special proceedings cases heard before the clerk of court are also kept. And those are not strictly judicial cases. They may include land divisions, petitions to divide an estate, name changes, adoption orders. So just kind of a general type of thing. And lunacy dockets or orders to of commitment to and release from mental institutions. Then we have vital records. Those are probably the uh, the best place to search first for records from your ancestors. They were uh, records of life events kept under government authority. authority. So uh, the first thing you would think was maybe birth records. In North Carolina, we only have indexes on microfilm starting at the late 1800s, so it's not comprehensive. In uh, North Carolina, birth and death certificates were only mand mandatory starting in 1913. Um, we have adoption records, but those are sealed and restricted for 100 years marriage licenses and registers. And we also have cohabitation bonds, marriage bonds, and divorce records. Even though divorces are technically a court record, they're still in this category. Uh, we have naturalization records or any records documenting the citizenship of immigrants. They are primarily for the early 1900s though, and there are more federal records today. Um, those are also found in early court minutes as well. And then we do also have death certificates starting in 1913 to 1979 in our custody, and also disinternment records pertaining to relocation cemetery plot. Uh, and then the fifth uh, category is land and property records. Uh, so deeds, uh, mortgage deeds, bills of sales, liens, foreclosures, plats. Uh, deed books typically would remain in the county due to title research by local attorneys, but we do have them all available in microfilm. And they can also be found online at the Register of Deeds websites or sites like uh, Family Search. Before 1865, these uh, land and property records may also include the conveyance of enslaved people. There is an excellent ongoing project called People Not Property that we're working on. And that's uh, the goal is to create a centralized database of all of the enslaved people that appear in these early deed books. So continuing on through the categories, next we have tax records. Uh, any person owning property or a free male of a certain age, which was usually 21 to 50, depending on the law at the time, uh, they should show up on a tax record. Uh, tax list uh, or taxpayers group by township or district, uh, those were alphabetical. They also have poll taxes, tax rolls, which has payment of property taxes. Um, the next category is wills. We have original or hand handwritten or transcribed copies in will books. And also wills before 1900 in North Carolina are name searchable in our online catalog. Our estate files are records of someone who died in tested or without a will, and they include accounts, administra administrator records, dower settlements, guardianship, that sort of thing. Our election records have uh, are mainly abstracts of election returns, but some counties do have permanent roles of registered voters, which can be very helpful. And then we have our miscellaneous um, category, which a lot of counties had different record keeping practices. So sometimes they had records that didn't easily fit into the first nine categories that I went through. So a lot of them went into this miscellaneous category. Um, the big kind of categories in this section are slaves and free persons of color records. Those could be uh, bills of sale, manumission papers, 
other court records relating to enslaved people or free persons of color. We have road records or documents pertaining to the maintenance and construction of roads, which can actually be really helpful in genealogy research and sometimes get overlooked, but they're a good source of seeing um, the names of able-bodied men in the area and their neighbors. We also have school records. They include usually school censuses and teacher and principal reports, and then uh, coroner's inquests or examination records concerning violent, mysterious, or unexplained deaths. So those are just a few options in the miscellaneous category, but there could be several other ones depending on the county. And then lastly, in our county records group, we have CRX records. Those were any records that were temporarily, temporarily out of the custody of the government entity, entity or the archives, and they could make up any of the categories I just went over. Um, they are a separated category strictly for legal reasons, because they may have been tampered with or altered while out of our official custody. And uh, so we put them in a separate category. Uh, so I'd like to go over briefly a county record example. On the screen, you can see an Orange County coroner's inquest taken from our miscellaneous records. Uh, the best place to find death dates prior to 1913 would definitely be probate or cemetery records. Uh, however, you can see in this record here, uh, witness Burke Walker wrote up a statement on the death of Richard Kate on December 12, 1812. He stated that he was at the house of Alan Sykes. He went to bed and then, and Kate was in good health at the time. But then the next morning when they went to wake him up, to his great surprise, he found that he was dead. So this is a rare document of a person's death 100 years before death certificates were mandated in North Carolina. So next, I'd like to go over our state agency records, which are any records created or maintained by a former or current state government office. Most of these will not be useful for genealogists. However, one might find a unique interaction with the state government that could prove helpful. Um, so I'll go over just a few of these. Uh, first is our executive record group. These were uh, governor's papers, office records and letter books, council journals, that sort of thing. Um, if people had a grievance, concern, or a special request, they would write a letter to the governor, and we have custody of all of those records from colonial governors up to Pat McCrory. Um, It would not be easy to peruse all of the governor's papers to look for an ancestor, but we do have some finding aids to assist you, and they are usually uh, categorized by date or by last name, so it could be done. Uh, next is legislative. Our uh, General Assembly session records would be in this group, House and Senate bills, laws and petitions to the state, divorces, um, couples who wanted a divorce in the early 1800s in North Carolina had to directly petition the General Assembly. So you'll actually see the earliest divorce records in the state in this category. Um, petitions could also be helpful when researching ancestors. Local communities would usually petition the government directly to ask for assistance or support in a civic matter, and a lot of times those were signed by community members. Next is our judicial group. Those are our Supreme Court case files and dockets. We have uh, case files from 1800 to 2008 in our custody, uh, and we also have a card index by name to cases prior to 1909 in our search room. Those are also available on Family Search currently, um, and these cases can be very helpful when researching burned counties. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And then, uh, lastly, government agencies. These could be um, the Secretary of State Office. This was the official record-keeping office of the state, and this category is probably the most helpful. They have all of the earliest wills that were filed in the state, as well as the original land grants. Uh, then we have treasurer and comptroller papers. Those were account books and pay vouchers for revolutionary uh, war support. So if you're researching a revolutionary war ancestor, those, that would be the place to go. Um, the Department of Public Instruction. If you graduated from a public high school in North Carolina prior to 2000, your name is in an archival record in our custody. Um, and we also have any precur precursor to today's state agency, like the auditor of dues. Right, here is a state agency record example. It's an application for license that was sent to the Board of Dental Examiners. We had a patron who contacted us who knew that her ancestor was a dentist, so she asked if we could check uh, this Board of Dental Examiners record group. 
and we were able to find an application for this ancestor. Uh, this application not only provides a date and place of birth for him, but also a photograph. All right, and then lastly, I would like to go over our special collections, which were created by a private individual, a family, a business, or other non-government entity. Like county government records, the North Carolina Historical Commission started collecting private records that documented North Carolina history, and they range from colonial to the present day. We have over 2,000 private collections. Those contain correspondence, diaries, account books, and they document all eras of North Carolina history. Our military collections document North Carolina military history from its time as a British colony to the present. And they include things like remembrances of war, letters during the conflict, rosters, et cetera. Uh, we also have organization records that include private, civic, and professional organi organizations from all around North Carolina. We have church minutes, registries, and published histories from churches. Uh, we have over 6,000 maps that are grouped by state, county, town, region, uh, and like subject like military. And we also have gotten copies of North Carolina maps from other institutions and have them in our custody or in our collection rather. Uh, we have some photographs and non-textual materials. Those are mostly in negative or uh, photograph form, but we do also have some audio and visual video recordings. There are VHSs in our stacks currently. Uh, we also have copies of records that are in the custody of the British archives and other foreign bodies. And uh, mostly they cover colonial history and the loyalists. We have a small collection of Bible records. They have very early documentation of vital records and those are all available currently on our North Carolina digital collection site, which I'll go over later. Uh, currently, we are doing oral histories that was started in 2019, and the initial project was called She Changed the World, where we were looking for stories of North Carolina women who helped make the world a better place. And then our regional offices, the Western Regional Archives and the Outer Banks History Center, they primarily collect uh, histories or records relating to the coast or the mountain region. So here is a private collection example. This is the Josiah Collins papers. Uh, Collins and his family came from England and settled in Edenton, Shawan County in North Carolina in the 1770s. And they operated the Somerset Plantation near Lake Felt. Part of the records in this private collection includes records of the birth and deaths of enslaved people uh, on the plantation, along with documentation of their parents. So this example on the screen provides the exact date of birth of 18 children at Lake Felt who were born into slavery during the year 1828. And they also have the name of a couple, which we can infer to be their parents beside them. So the private collections can also be a great source for genealogy research. Okay, so that was a general overview of the options available for on-site research. Now I'd like to spend some time on our online resources. Our main web page, which I've posted two screenshots on uh, the screen now, is the uh, most helpful portion is the researcher sec section and the search catalog. I've posted both of those, sorry. <laughs> DOC is our online catalog. It stands for Discover Online Catalog. And it is a revised search engine that we started about three years ago that replaced our uh, older Mars catalog. It's pretty straightforward when searching for more general information. On our site, you can use uh, or you can find helpful um, kind of instructions on how to use the catalog and explanations on what the information means. So in this screenshot, I typed in uh, Tyrrell and Apprentice to see what apprentice records may be available in Tyrrell County. And you can see uh, the there are options on the side here for narrowing down the results based on record type, uh, the date, uh, et cetera. And you can see the first thing that popped up was apprentice bonds and records of Tyrrell County in the county records section. Our other helpful online site is the North Carolina Digital Collection. This site contains over 90,000 historic and recent photographs, state government publications, manuscripts, and other resources on topics related to North Carolina. The collections are free and some are full text searchable, which is very helpful. 
and they bring together content from the State Archives of North Carolina and the State Library. Below are just a few collections or subjects I wanted to highlight that I think will be helpful for genealogy research. The first is links to State Archives material, and they include lists of other websites where our records have already been digitized and are available. That would be um, Ancestry.com, FamilySearch.org, UNC.NC.Maps, uh, YouTube, that sort of thing. Next would be Colonial Court and Probate Records. I mentioned in our Secretary of State uh, section that there are early Secretary of State wills um, that would be very helpful. Those that have already been digitized and put on this website. They also have the earliest court and probate records in the state. Those have been digitized as well. And we've also put some of our earliest and rare documents from the 1600s on the site. Our military records, some militia and troop returns have been included on this site. They largely right now cover the Revolutionary War and include lists, returns, record of prisoners and record of draftees. Uh, the War of 1812 pay vouchers have also been added as well. And we also have Civil War pension applications. Our, our reg alien registration records from all counties have been added to the site. Um, a lot of counties did not have uh, these books, only some counties did, so you may see a gap when researching those. Uh, and they also usually have pictures too, so that could be exciting to go through. Uh, and then we've also, we also have a family records section, and those include our Bible records, cemetery survey records, and some published family histories from the State Library. Uh, keep in mind, these collections do not include everything at the State Archives. They are not comprehensive yet, but they are still growing and we are adding new stuff every day. So our online store is an excellent resource for requesting copies of records if you have a specific citation, uh, but don't have the ability to visit us in person to view the record. There is a $2 uh, fee per request for North Carolina residents and a $20 fee for out of state residents. The links uh, for this webpage is also available under services to researchers on our main page. And then in closing, I just wanna acknowledge that this is a lot of information that I just went over. We do not expect visitors to remember everything about how the records are arranged or which counties experienced fire loss. We can provide a handout that provides some of this information that's been posted uh, on the site that Kate went over. Uh, but the reference staff in the search room will be more than happy to assist you during your visit or over the phone or email, however you'd like to contact us. Our hope is that you will come visit us or call or email us and we can see if we can point you in the right direction to help find the documents that might open up your genealogy research. Uh, can I answer any questions? Thank you very much. Um, yes, we do have some questions for you. Okay. So, um, the first one is, um, I know you, you talked a little bit about the, the fees for records through the archive store. Yeah. Um, and so this person is asking, um, does a person from out of state need to pay a fee to search the online materials at the library? No, you can uh, contact them for more um, specific information, but their website has uh, ways to search through their stuff and there's no fee um, for just searching through any of our sites. The, if you email us asking like questions about what may be available online, we can also direct you to things that are already digitized. Uh, and if you have questions about uh, any kind of costs like, you know, accompanying those, we can give you estimates as well. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Um, so the next question is, um, this person has visited the Johns, the Johnston County Heritage Center, and they found a lot there, but, um, they're asking is Johnston County, one of the counties that won't have much in the archives, or they're, they're kind of wondering about the collections for that county. So, gotcha. So if you go to our website, archives at ncdcr.gov. There is a search bar at the top uh, right. And if you type in county guide, uh, the first thing that pops up is, I'm pulling it up on my screen right now so I can make sure I'm telling you the right thing. But the first thing that pops up is county records guide. 
And that has all the counties listed out alphabetically. You can go to Johnson County and download that uh, specific Johnson County research guide. And that is a list of everything in our custody for Johnson County, including the date range that we have for them and what's only available on uh, in physical form versus microfilm. Okay. And um, next, someone's asking how might they locate records um, for, it's a fifth grade grandmother who, um, uh, who she says was married to a slaveholder and they had a, she had a daughter who was a slave by 1830, she was a free person of color. So she's wondering how to, Okay, search gotcha. records for that. So was um so it sounds like was was the fifth great grandmother the daughter of the slave owner or the wife? I guess it sounds doesn't matter like either way. Wife. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter either way because they're still family. Um, so for that sort of thing, I would suggest uh, seeing if there were any plantation records for that area at the time. You can send us an email. We do have a, um, we're still building it up, but we do have a plantation database that we're keeping track of. Uh, and it's kind of county specific and last name specific. Uh, so you can contact us for information to see if there was any, any kind of plantation records in our special collections that have been donated. Um, I would also suggest checking out, was this 1830s that they were yes. a free person? I would also suggest check, checking out the county itself in the um, miscellaneous category, uh, slaves and free persons of color. There may be, uh, I'm not sure about the phrasing, if they, if they used to be enslaved and then they were a free person of color by the 1830s, the manumission papers or the court records where the person petitioned for them to be free could be in those areas and they could provide more information. Um, you could also send us an email and we can see specifically what we might have uh, kind of regarding the specific situation. That's kind of broad strokes, but. Um. That sounds good. Thank you. Um, and then for the People Not Property Project, um, if, if the person has research from wills, et cetera, on people who were slaves, does the project, is the project interested in receiving that research? And is there a submission procedure or form? So the People Not Property project is currently going through all of these deed books per counties, uh, for every county and kind of just cataloging any instance of an enslaved person that shows up in those records. Um, I think they've done a few counties as of now, like mm -hmm. Wake County, Orange County. Um, I. I'm personally not involved in the project. Some of my colleagues are, so I don't know all the details about submitting information, but you can certainly send me an email and I can check on that for you and then let you know, kind of point you in the right direction if um, once I find out more information about it. Sounds good. Um, and then in the presentation, you mentioned the, um, the record from the dental board. Yes. And someone was asking about um, licenses for midwives, if if that might be something included in in the collections. Um, I know that there are. Hold on, just a moment. Okay, I am. I don't actually think we have a category of midwifery because um, I think we. One of my colleagues was working on a project recently about that and we were kind of talking about it. I was like oh, I think I have some information but uh no they're still working on it so we don't have a category per se I think if you were to go to our um doc website and kind of type in midwife a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of options may pop up under the state archives like um there are some photographs that pop up there are some private collections that mention midwives but uh, unfortunately, no, we don't have any board of uh, midwifery or anything like that. Okay, sounds good. Um, and then combining a couple of questions, um, someone was asking, um, 
where can they find information about the colonial and the revolutionary war records and then um do you have records of everyone who fought in the militia during the revolutionary war and what about burned counties okay yes yeah. so. uh so for the revolutionary war on our website we do have a finding aid for what is available for that if you type in uh revolutionary war then they'll pop up mainly the best uh resources we have for that are our army accounts books it does not list every soldier that fought but it is fairly comprehensive from what we've been able to gather and we've been able to create a really nice list uh, on some different uh, online resources like um, Carolina, Carolina, Carolina.org. I think that's North and South Carolina. Uh, they've put together a really comprehensive list taken from our army accounts. Uh, that is name searchable in our online catalog. So if you were, if you knew kind of what soldier you were looking for, you could type in the name in our search bar and then it would list whether they show up in a army account and then they would have the exact book and page number. Um, again, that's not comprehensive and it's not mm -hmm. also necessarily all soldiers. Sometimes those account books listed um, people who uh, provided money for the, for the war effort or uh, goods and services uh, that way. So like sometimes we'll see a voucher for a bushel of carrots, that sort of thing. But that is our most comprehensive list. We do have uh, also uh, miscellaneous folders that appear both in our county and our military records that include like uh, militia, militia and muster rolls for both the continental line and militia. Uh, sometimes they're more random than comprehensive, unfortunately, though, and mm -hmm. they're not easily as easily searchable as the army accounts. But if you knew the kind of date range you were looking for, the county uh, where they probably would have been in, whether they would have been militia or continental line, we can definitely um, kind of go through the finding aid and see what folders might be helpful. And we can kind of point you in those directions. Um, if you wanted to put in a request, we could search those for you and see if that person pops up anywhere. Okay. Oh, um, sorry, I forgot yeah. the question also had like burned counties. Um, and colonial, where to find colonial yes. uh, things. Uh, so I don't think we have a fully fleshed out colonial record guide, but a lot of our records do have date ranges that list whether they go through the colonial period. And then uh, the site that I mentioned, the digital.ncdcr.gov, uh, they do have on their main page a category. Um, let me pull that up on. It is listed as colonial court records, uh, district superior court records. So we do have a lot of them listed that go through the colonial period that are digitized on that site because we tried to get the earliest ones put up there first. Mm -hmm. um, as for burned counties, if you go, I mentioned uh, the county record guide. Uh, for the previous question. If you're mm -hmm. interested in a specific county, at the top of those guides, they list whether there has been any fire loss or loss of records, and then they list exactly uh, what that would be. Um, so for example, let me pull up the, the Johnson County again, just to show an idea. This says at the beginning of it that it was established in 1746 from Craven County. So that'll give you another place to look if the records don't go back as far as you need. And it also says at the top, there are no records of any fires, but many records are missing. So it'll kind of give you uh, kind of a breakdown of what we know is missing and how. And you can, um, I don't believe that Revolutionary War records that many were lost due to fire, um, not to my knowledge, but it could be the case. Um, I would have to double check that one. Okay, okay. good deal, thank you. Um, and uh, you spoke about the the family Bibles that are available yes. digitally. And so um, someone was wondering, do you accept those as donations or do you prefer um, to receive a digital copy? Yeah, so those? how how we accept those, we are currently accepting them. Um, there are some uh, guidelines that we uh, use when deciding whether or not to accept them. Uh, I would, I have a colleague who handles those so I can give you his direct um, 
email if you're interested. Uh, his name is Colin Reeve. Um, or you can just email me and I can send that information along to him. Uh, my email is on the screen, by the way. That's uh, my personal one at the bottom. Uh, but for those Bible records, we usually collect them as scanned copies from the book. So we don't accept the, uh, the full Bible. We are mainly just interested in any of the family trees that are in the top or any notes about you know, the family or the county. Uh, so we usually will work with you to decide uh, which pages to scan, how to get that to us, if you'd like to send um, physical versions or digital. Uh, so Colin can definitely work out with the with the whoever was interested in that uh, those kind of details. Sounds good. Um, so the next question: This person says that they'll be visiting North Carolina in the fall winter. Um, is there a way that they could arrange to send a request for uh, for a couple of records for their NC ancestors and collect them in person? And if so. Um, what which location would would they be best served yeah that is no problem for that collection we yeah we do that sort of thing all the time that's no problem i would recommend though uh that you wait until you're there to request the records because once you're there it's only 10 cents per page for us to copy it for you um unless of course it's a very big order but uh once you arrive there and request the record it's only 10 cents per page no matter where you're from and we can also mail that to whatever location um, you provide us if you uh, do not have time to pick it up that day. Uh, but yes, if you wanted to go ahead and let us know that you'll be visiting and we'll be uh, looking at specific items, you can email our direct uh, email, which is the archives at ncdcr.gov and just let us know. And we will let you know um, whether or not that's something that we can pull day of, or if it's something we have to uh, arrange to be delivered to us if they're off-site, that sort of thing. And we can work with you there about how you'd like to, if you'd like to request copies ahead of time, we would go ahead and mm -hmm. go over the payment. So yes, you can email that web, or that email directly. We do that all the time. Um, let's see here. Um, how are now defunct counties researched, such as, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Tryon or Tryon County? Tryon, yeah, you were Tryon. right the first time. <laughs> okay, I have. they say that they have some quarter, uh, quarter session minutes, but would like to discover more for that county. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we do have several counties that are now defunct. We, um, North Carolina officially now has 100 counties, but our county record uh, codes go up to 107. We do still have categories of records in counties that no longer exist. Um, a lot of the times, depending on how long the county existed, we don't have many records for that county, but if they were distinct enough and they had, you know, been creating records, we do still have those records available. Um, I think there's only one county that was so old and it was um, kind of uh, abolished so long ago that we don't have any records for it, but we left a cat or we left the code there just in case something ever appears. And I think that's Bath County. We don't have really anything for Bath or, and also Albemarle. We only have a few things for Albemarle. But yes, um, on the county record guide, Tryon is an option. We do have some records there. So you can click on the Tryon County option and download that guide and you can see exactly what we have available. Okay. Um. And then someone else is asking about uh, Black marriage records for Buncombe County, and they say that these were some of the, the only Black marriage records missing for North Carolina, and they're wondering how they might be able to research that. Okay, gotcha, yeah. So um, depending on the time frame, there are a few categories of marriage records available in North Carolina. The um, earliest would be marriage bonds. They were from the inception of a lot of the counties to about 1868. And those were both uh, white and black or any other race. So they did encompass a lot of different races. They were not segregated. Um, after that, we had marriage registers, which was from 1868 onwards. And in the early times for those, those usually were segregate, segregated black and white. Um, there was also a middle category of cohabitation records that we have. After uh, 
the Emancipation Proclamation and uh, when slavery was abolished, we had the option or the state gave the option to former enslaved people who had been living as man and wife to go ahead and register with their county as man and wife and then just let us let them know kind of how long they had been living as man and wife so we could put that on paper. So we do have a lot of cohabitation records that are specifically mm -hmm. for uh, Black Americans who, um, and they have some good information there that can be researched. I believe the cohabitation records are name searchable on our website. Uh, don't quote me on that though. They're, they, they're still kind of putting things up and down. Uh, but if you have a specific couple that you're interested in, um, you can email us to let us know if there, or to ask if there are any places where they would be already digitized. For example, the marriage bonds are usually, have usually all been put on Ancestry and Family Search. The marriage registers are not comprehensive on any of those sites, but they are also available. Um, the cohabitation bonds, I think, are the one that's not quite comprehensively digitized everywhere. So there are still options. Um, mm -hmm. you, could, you should definitely shoot us an email and we can see what may be available based on the time period, the county, that sort of thing. Thank you. Um, and then someone is wondering about the, the main difference between the Raleigh and Asheville locations. So the Asheville location primarily has records uh, about the Western region. Uh, so they have, um, it's mainly private collections that the, that the two um, kind of secondary places have. So they have private collections that are denoted on our search guides. So if you're searching for something and it pops up on the side as, um, what does it say? Going up. So it'll say uh, State Archives of North Carolina, Outer Banks History Center, or Western Regional Archives. And it'll let you know where those are kept. Usually Western kind of private collections are kept at the Western Regional Archives. Those are a lot of um, like college, Black Mountain College papers are all kept there. Um, a few other big collections are stored there primarily. Um, but it is definitely not as big as the Raleigh location. We have all mm -hmm. of the county records. The two um, secondary repositories are for kind of region specific private collections. Oh, okay. And um, does what um, this person's wondering what kind of information they might be able to find as far as Quaker records? We do have some Quaker records. Um, trying to think offhand, I can't remember. I don't think there's like a uh, specific category. I think they're just mentioned in a lot of things. Um, there are some secondary sources that we have in our collection that go over what's available. So I could I could check there there if <laughs> they wanted to send me an email. Sorry to keep saying just send me an email. I can check, but uh. Yeah, I could check once I am at the uh, the Raleigh location to see if there is a specific list. Mm -hmm. I think mainly for our Quaker records, they're just kind of mentioned in a lot of like private collections, county records. They're just kind of interspersed. We don't have a um, a separate category, I guess, would be the easiest answer for that. Sounds good. So I think, let's see, we'll do... Um... Do you have Eastern Cherokee records and family names? And they're wondering what is available as far as that goes. Gotcha. Uh, we actually don't have many Native American uh, like tribal records. Uh, the Eastern Band of Cherokees and a lot of other tribes in North Carolina chose to keep their kind of tribal records uh, with their uh, own, to, you know, to themselves. We have some records relating to the uh, Eastern Band of Cherokees. They are mentioned a lot in our um, like General Assembly session records, the, um, uh, what was the other category? Governor's papers. There's a lot of correspondence that, where they're mentioned. So we do have mm -hmm. some records, but not necessarily like a tribal list or um, anything like that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. And I think that will do it for us this evening. So um, thank you again so much for your presentation. And I just wanted to mention if anyone would like a copy of the chat from the 
uh, from tonight's Zoom, feel free to send us an email at genealogy at acpl.info, and we'll stick that in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions that come up, feel free to, to email us as well. So thank you again, Catherine. We really appreciate your time and your presentation. And I hope everyone has a good evening. You as well. Thanks for having me. Thank you.